Hi there. We thought that we would show you how we test the GY511 magnetometer accelerometer boards. These boards have a three axis magnetometer and accelerometer and they communicate via the I squared C bus. We've just bought 400 of these boards and we've started to notice a very high failure rate. So we thought we would show you how we test them. Let's see what we've got. We're going to test the next 10 boards. They come in a, a sealed anti-static bag uh, with the board and the header. So we'll be testing each of those. Here we have our test procedure. You can find a link to this on YouTube. It contains the specified test data, the test procedure, and our pass criteria. Here we have a non-magnetic three-axis gimbal. And in the center, we have mounted the test setup. It comprises a uh, ESP8266 processor board and the device under test, a GY511 accelerometer magnetometer. The processor board is connected via a USB cable to a laptop computer, which is running the Arduino IDE serial monitor. On the ESP8266, we're running our test program. And this is displaying the output of that test program. Let's reset the test and do it again and see what the results are for this board which passes. When we reset the test, it takes the reading of the board. It displays here the test parameters and it shows the values for the maximum and minimum of each axis the three X, Y, and Z accelerometer axes and the three X, Y, and Z magnetometer axes. In order to do the test, we must turn the board in the gimbal through 12 cardinal points. The reason for that is that it measures both the magnetic and gravitational field in this area. Now, to make the test a bit simpler, we're pointing the unit due north, or at least magnetic north. The magnetic field in this area actually points in that direction, but it comes out of the ground at a rather steep angle, 78 degrees. The gravitational vector, of course, points straight down to the center of the Earth. So we need to measure this vector and this vector. And to do that, we need to point the sensor in 12 different directions. Let's do that and we'll count the different directions as we go. Let's say this is direction one and this is direction two. Direction three, direction four, direction five, direction six, direction seven, direction eight. Then direction nine and 10, 11 and 12. Now you may have seen the pass indicator come up. It's important to stress that our pass criteria is not very strict we require the sensor to have at least 90% of the range specified in the data sheet and the offset of the sensor to be uh, about one third of that range. Now, we're sitting at an anti-static uh, workstation. We're connected to ground, so there's no possibility that we're going to damage any of these units. Uh, we'll remove the device under test, which was one of the ones that uh, we've tested earlier. 
the display is just showing the previous uh, values red. And let's get the uh, next unit to test. So here it is. We put it on the, the header. And then we put the header onto the test fixture. Now we press reset and start this test again. Let's do it quickly this time. It turns out that we're reading the sensor 50 times per second, so there's no possibility that we're missing uh, any uh, important point there. And you can see that this sensor doesn't say pass. And let's look at the data to find out why. Here are the uh, three accelerometer readings. 16,000 minus 16,000. 17,000 minus 16,000. 15,000 minus 20,000. They all have a very large range between the maximum positive and the maximum negative value. Those ranges are all above the specified uh, value, uh, which is shown in the data. And uh, they extend in both directions so that the uh, offset is more or less in the centre. The same here for the gravitational axis. You'll notice that the numbers are smaller. But, uh, the, this is the magnetic axis. You'll notice that the numbers are smaller because the magnetic sensor is not quite as sensitive. The uh, magnetic field of the Earth is not quite as strong as the gravitational field. Uh, 600 minus 700, 400 minus uh, nearly 800. But look at this, 255 minus 256. That's about half uh, the range that we're looking for. And there's something a bit peculiar about those numbers. Uh, 255, 256, that looks to me to be an error in the communication uh, of the data. So the way we record that failure is it's a failure of the magnetic Z axis. So I'll just write that down for future reference. I'm going to do another test now. So that one is a failure as well. Let's get the next unit out. I'm mounting it here and here. Okay. We need to start the test again. So I press the send button to start and we go through the motions again. This one, as we can see, has passed. Uh, 1500 minus, uh, 15,000 minus 16,000, 16,000 minus 20,000, 16,000 minus 20,000, 600 minus 700, uh, 400 minus 700, 600 minus 600, Six, 610 minus 610 is good. Uh, it is uh, a bit peculiar that the values are exactly the same. So let's have a look at that a little bit more carefully. Uh, we can see here that the values are different on the z-axis. So it looks to me like that was just a coincidence that the values were the same. It's now 611 minus 617. So this one passes. We always investigate the failures to see what they might indicate. Putting it on the header again. This will be number three. They're quite, um, quite quick to test. Start.
Well, that one's not a pass, and we can see a problem down here as well. A very small range. This sensor is completely unusable. It doesn't have enough range to respond to the uh, uh, magnetic uh, z-axis. So I've written that down. I'll try the next one. Reset. Just try over here a bit more. Now, this is not passing. Uh, it looks to me like this ax this uh, the positive axis of the Y sensor. I'll just try and get maybe a higher reading. It's 489, it needs to be a little bit more than 500. I think I'd accept that one. I think that one, uh, uh, that one will work. We won't have any trouble with that. We can calibrate that. Uh, discrepancy out. Let's try another one. Just make sure they're on the right way. It's a interference fit with the, uh, the pads. Here we go again. Uh, go a bit further. I can go back this way, it doesn't matter. This way, this way, and there's an instant pass. We weren't particularly strict about doing this one, but you'll see the values increase if we do. There's our pass direction now. So that's a good one. Excellent. Reset this test. And there's another pass, no problems. Reset. This one's looking very iffy. Well, we've got two axes here that just aren't responding at all. The MY and the MZ. Uh, this one also, sorry, the MX and the MY, the MZ is also not up to scratch. So that's, I write that down as just M, the magnetometer has failed. So that goes there. Get the next one. I'll go through the different uh, failure categories in just a moment. Reset. Uh, 
our test, do our little dance. Oh, I can see there the uh, NZ is hardly responding at all. So here's the Z axis and uh, yeah, that's, that's not responding at all. Looks like the other axes are okay, so that's an NZ failure. That's probably the most frequent failure we have. Two more to go. Reset. And again, I'm seeing the whole of the magnetometer just isn't working there. It sometimes jumps like this, but no, uh, it's it's not moving. It doesn't it doesn't even respond to the magnetic field, and and the range isn't any good. So looks like the whole of the magnetometer there isn't working. That's another M failure. And the last one, this is uh, 50 we've tested so far. Uh, this one looks bad right from the beginning, 4,096 minus 4,096. So, uh, well, in fact, it's minus minus, so this one's just stuck. As you can see, it's not moving and nothing's happening there either. So, not so good. Uh, that is a NZ failure. I'll just write that down. All right, so that's um, 50 that we have uh, tested. And we've got uh, 23 passed. Um, that was the bag that we're testing. So that's uh, 50 more to do there, another 100, another 100, another 100 to make up a test of 400 units. But uh, the results so far aren't looking very good with greater than 50% uh, failure rate uh, so far. Let's see if that's all I need to uh, show you. We'll, uh, we'll do the rest of the testing and uh, find out what the final result is. So thank you for watching. If you want any further details, um, check on the uh, YouTube information. And for uh, the reason for this project, have a look on our website, www.sarcnet.org, sarcnet.org. Uh, have a look at our Sark Track product. Thank you for watching.